Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Yesterday was the release of the Arturia Astrolab. I did a reactions review and felt, uh, in hindsight, that I was perhaps a little bit over-enthusiastic and gushing. I've now watched many of the review videos, read the forum posts, some of my own comments, and I now am feeling I have some reservations and concerns, definitely second thoughts, so I wanted to share that with you today. You see, I'm not sure I'd call myself an influencer, but certainly many thousands of people watch my videos and I certainly don't want to lead anybody astray. So let's put the record straight about the Arturia Astrolab. Okay, I've now had time to digest that design and there are certainly some aspects of it that really do not appeal to me. And many of you, judging by the comments. Yes, that little screen might be quirky, and I love the French design of it all, but it seems to be fashion over usability. That tiny little display, even though it looks to be very high quality and full colour, it's in the middle of the jog dial, so as you're actually adjusting parameters, your hand will be covering it up. It's tiny. I won't be able to read the text on that little screen. There's plenty of space for a bigger screen, so why didn't they just that? add that uh, instead. And even to activate features to make a selection you actually have to press down on the display which just feels a little bit weird and it's going to get really smudgy after a while. A lot of people have been complaining that you can't do deep editing on the keyboard which is for me not a problem because I don't tend to enjoy doing that so much anyway. I just call up presets and tweak them and for me I think Actually, these eight macro knobs where you can adjust the most important synthesizer parameters and the effects are a really good choice. It is intended to be a stage keyboard, not a deep editing synthesizer. A bit sad to see on a keyboard of this price, about 1600 euros, 1600 dollars, somewhere around there, 1500 pounds. Sad to see an external wall wart power supply at that kind of price range. I expect to see internal power supplies. It has been confirmed on some of the reviews that the enclosure is made of metal. Those side panels, apparently not wood, I think it was Loop Pop said they're made of Bakelite, which is like a kind of very hard plastic. That's okay. If they look nice and are very robust and durable, that's a good thing. The problem is with wooden end cheeks is they always tend to get dinged, chipped and cracked. So I guess that's a good thing. A good thing that they made it of Bakelite, that is. During my video yesterday, I forgot to, or I overlooked to check the polyphony specs. Now, a lot of people are upset about this, actually. For me, it's fine, and I hate keyboards with crippled polyphony, but for the synthesizer emulations, the analog synths and the digital synths, the emulations, you get about eight voices, and I'm assuming that's eight voices per part, because you can split and layer it, two parts. So if it can do 16 voices, that's fine, all of these, old vintage synths only did like four or five or six or eight anyway, so that's perfectly adequate as long as it can do what the old synthesizers could do, I'm happy. For the piano and acoustic voices, it seemed to be around 48, but the polyphony specs are a little bit vague, but I think it'll be good enough for me. And yes, it is two-part multi-timbral. You can do splits and layers with two different sounds. I would have loved to have seen it as four part multi timbral like the Nord leads. For me, that's the real sweet spot. You can then connect it to the computer and do some sequencing of quite meaningful tracks with four different sounds going on at the same time. But two is okay and twice as good as one. Okay, we need to talk about the keybed. This is supposedly a high quality keybed and some of the reviewers have said that it feels excellent, although some of those aren't really perhaps piano players. Sorry, I, I don't want to come across as a snob, but I, yeah, I just did, I guess. Bugger off! I think I'm going to write an angry comment. The real test of a keyboard is when you play in the black keys, you know, with lots of sharps and flats. Like if you're playing in a the key of B, for example, or C flat, C flat minor, C sharp minor, C flat, <laughs> C sharp minor. You know what I mean. This guy is a real noob. When you do that, you tend to have your fingers towards the back of the keys. I saw a video from Arturia where I was incredibly disappointed, actually. 
I'll put the photo up on the screen. You can see how the keyboard is very, or the keys are very steeply angled as he's playing them. There's hardly any movement of the keys towards the back. That tells me it's a very short hinged keyboard, making it very challenging, hard and unsatisfying to play nice chords towards the back of the keys. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely something I was not uh, excited to see. I haven't had great experience of Arturia key beds in the past. Maybe I'll put a bit of B-roll here in the video. Oh, so as I was pulling this thing out of the box, I just bumped this white key up a little bit. And now look at it, it's broken. And I didn't use any force at all. I just very lightly touched it. And now it's all distorted. So that's another thing we're gonna to have to fix. And now I can't even press it down at all. Well, that totally sucks. For this price, I would expect a much more premium keyboard over here. I mean, this is very, very expensive, but you can see as you press it down, you don't get that very steep angle and it's just as easy to press at the back of the key as it is at the front, which is what you want in a premium expensive keyboard like this. I'll probably do an entire video sometime, I've been meaning to do it, how to spot a bad key bed, because I'm fed up of manufacturers trying to fob us off with inferior key beds, thinking that we won't notice or we don't care, but I do and I want to raise, raise your awareness about this. It's This whole concept of putting VST plugins into a hardware instrument and having them all run on board natively is nothing new actually. It might be new for Orturia, but other manufacturers have been doing it for ages and that's why we have these here on the table in front of me. Let's take this for example, the Korg Wave State. This is running the WaveState VST that you can download. You can buy it for about 100 bucks, run it on your computer together with your controller keyboard of choice. It sounds exactly the same. It is exactly the same synthesis engine. The advantage of this, this is only about 500 bucks, 600 bucks one of these. The advantage of course is you get all of the controls mapped to the very complicated WaveStation, WaveState synthesizer engine. This I brought out, this is just a boutique. You can buy the, exactly the same synthesizer on the Roland Cloud. You can subscribe or buy it and download it. Exactly the same sounds, exactly the same engine. Or you can choose to buy the hardware, which is running the exact same software inside. Some of you might be aware of Roland's Phantom flagship workstation synthesizers running the Zencore, yes, Zencore sound engine. Well, if you wanna have that as a VST, just go to Roland Cloud and download and install Zenology, exactly the same thing. The Roland synths, many people say it's just a plugin running in a box or a number of plugins. Finally, I wanted to mention this. This is the Machine Plus. It's a standalone device. You don't need to connect it to your computer. It's got the FM8 VST plugin on board. It's got Massive. It's got Pro 53, who remembers that? Reactor and tons of other stuff. This is VSTs in a box as well. Contact as well, did I mention that? So although this is new territory for Arturia, it's not new territory in the industry as a whole. So what are the alternatives then to the new Arturia, uh, what's it called again, Astrolab? Well, I have Analog Lab on my PC. I bought it on sale. I don't think I paid any more than 50 bucks for it. And that has got all of the same sounds, all the same functionality that this new keyboard has for 50 bucks. And the Arturia thing, the new one is 1600 bucks. If you already have a good MIDI controller or any keyboard that outputs MIDI, preferably over USB, then there you go. 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever Analog Lab costs, then you have the exact same sound sets. But of course, you have to be prepared to hook your keyboard to the computer. But I make all my music in this room. The computer is just literally four feet away from me with all of my VST instruments. So for me, really, since I'm always in here, why not just connect a controller to the computer. I 
beginning to not really see the point in the Astrolab. I guess if you're a gigging musician, then perhaps the Astrolab might start to look more attractive because you don't want to have a PC or a laptop with you on stage and run the risk of it crashing and the latency and this kind of thing. The killer feature, I have to say, is all of these fantastic sounds. Yes, the Arturia V collection that Analog Labs is based on is very highly regarded. A huge variety of sounds. All of the vintage classics are modelled and included, plus acoustic sounds as well. That is the killer feature, having availability to all of those sounds on a hardware instrument. Yeah, I do see the attraction and it is quite desirable. Oh, cheerio, why didn't you send me one of them to demonstrate? It feels like there was a huge party and I wasn't invited. Come on, show Woody some love. And that brings me on to the next question. Will I be buying one for myself? I was quite enthusiastic about it yesterday. I know, I apologize if I was a bit OTT gushing. I do get easily excited. But after, after reflecting on this, and digesting all the information, the answer is no, I don't think so. If I find one used in a few months, a year or something, I'll pick one up for sure, check it out. But it's a lot of money, I think, when I already have all of those sounds just here. The only thing I have to do is connect the controller to the PC and I have exactly the same thing, really, basically. And I'm not a gigging musician, so for me, I'm quite happy to use the PC. Yeah, if you already have V Collection or Analog Lab, I think this is quite a hard sell, to be honest. And Arturia don't offer any discounts on the hardware if you already own the software, which I think is a bit of a miss. And we'll see if they address that in the future. I mean, V Collection is expensive. I don't remember the exact price, perhaps $500. So would it be nice to offer you a discount if you already own the license? But anyway, Arturia, if you want to put this right and send me one, I'd be happy to demonstrate it. I don't even want a freebie. I'd much prefer you to lend me one. I'll make a few videos and send it back. So yeah, that offer is uh, open to you if you want to try and persuade me to change my mind. Anyway, once again, a huge congratulations to Arturia on your 25 years and the launch of this new product, which is a milestone technology for you. And remember, guys, this is just V1. I can't wait to see what you have coming in the V2 version of the hardware. So that's about it. I just wanted to put the balance straight because I felt I was slightly over-enthusiastic yesterday, which was genuine, that's my feelings. But after thinking about this overnight, I wanted to get the balance slightly better. Please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. And thank you so much if you have. It means a lot to me. Until next time then, I'll see you. Cheerio.